Oh, man. Here we go. What's up? So appreciate you, Daniel, for coming on to the show. The first person on the show. Honored. The AHA Moment Podcast. And for us, it's always about interviewing people that have done something, right? Have faced some struggles, still trying to figure everything out, but sharing some things along the way so that people feel inspired to continue the journey, whatever it is. So immediately when I thought about starting this podcast, I'm like, I got to get this motherfucker. <laughs> I'm absolutely honored to be the first one now. I'm not gonna lie. This is uh, <laughs> this is this is deadly now. So sh fair play to you for 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 getting after it and, and doing this. So honored no, I know. I, I was on the fucking train figuring out like how to start a podcast. So yeah. I was on YouTube. You know, looked a couple of things on Reddit. But man, there's nothing like just diving in deep. Just so I don't, it. yeah, I don't really know how to intro you besides you know, you're who, like who the fuck is that? Guy, <laughs> right? Like who the fuck is that guy over there? Sitting across from me on the couch. Like, who is that guy? Who is that guy? Uh, my name's Daniel McKenna. I'm a celebrity personal trainer here in New York City. Oh, I hate that title. Go for I it. I know that, but I was told to say <laughs> that uh, by my PR girl, Christina. Shout out to you. Um, I'm a dog dad. i got Dougal here lying at my feet. Hopefully he'll chill for the next hour or so. And creator of the Irish Shank Society, a community that I've built over the last couple of years recently launched the Irish Shank Foundation as well, which is one very proud moment for me in my life. Um if I to give back. Um been doing the Irish Shank Strength Summit this year, just finished my ninth summit this past weekend in San Diego. And yeah, I do a bit of photography on the side. So that's the MK photography. Awesome, awesome. All right, let's start with like I saw you eating a lot of tacos. How many tacos you eat? I had 54 tacos in 16 days there between Austin, Houston, and Scottsdale, Arizona. Best taco? There was a food truck in Austin. I'm blanking on the name, but it's a yellow food truck, and I'll be fit to, like, tag it when you post <laughs> this. But they were, like, small, smaller street tacos. I had seven of them in one sitting. Ph phenomenal. I could have had probably another three or four if I really wanted to, but I was knew I was getting more tacos later that day, so I said, let's just do it to seven. <laughs> so, but they were phenomenal. Unbelievable. That's a lot of fucking tacos. Hi, they were unreal, I'm telling you. I was starving too, so I was very funny. <laughs> Dude, man, I, I feel like, how long have we known each other now? Like, it's been... Uh, 2019. 2019. At least going on five years now, yeah. Miserable five years. <laughs> it's miserable. been a while, it's five been a years. Miserable five years. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, I feel like, one, I know the type of person you are. And, like, when I'm thinking about this podcast, I'm like, man, I got to get this guy on. Because to me, I'm like, you got the it factor. You know, we've talked about that stuff for a long time. But before you even got into, like, fitness, because yeah. that's what everyone knows you for, right? Yeah, You're yeah, the yeah. fucking guy that brings kettlebells to the park and does all these things, make people lift a lot of weights. But, like, before fitness, like, what were you doing? I was doing construction. I was an electrician. Um, I'm a certified electrician in Ireland. Did my four years cert certificate. Worked at it for a couple of years at home. When I came over here, um, I actually lived in Chicago for six months before I came to New York. So in 2016, I lived in Chicago for the second half of the year. Did it there. Loved it. I was actually going back to Chicago. And then my friend rang me and said, no, you've got to come to New York. Like, you got to come here. And then I said, right. Made a couple of phone calls, end up, yeah, got a job, apartment sorted. So came here in February of 2017, worked as an electrician for about a year or so. And ah, it was all right. It was, you know, I enjoyed it at the start, but then it kind of, it just didn't really, I didn't, I didn't start, started to not enjoy it. So um, I made the transition in May, I think, of 2018 from construction to my fitness goal of being a personal trainer in New York City, which took a while to get there, uh, took a took took a while, but you know, from that decision of quitting the electrical job on a Tuesday morning at nine a.m., I'll never forget it. Just literally packing the tools up, walking out to this point right now has been a wild journey. But yeah, I used to be an electrician, like a, a, tra a tradesman before I was a fitness trainer. A, a tradesman, that's what they call it. Yeah, a tradesman. So with like. That transition, how did you know that like fitness was going to be your thing? Like, I, is that like something you already knew, you know, when you were in Chicago, before Chicago, back in Ireland? Like, so knowing, like, so I had the desire to, I wanted to do it. That was my goal. So I literally remember, I remember doing it where I had my two hands out in front of me. I was like, right, do I want to get up every day, go to a building site, listen to a dickhead tell me what to do that doesn't know what he's talking about, or get up every day, go to a gym? 
help people and wear a pair of shorts every day. That's what I wanted to do. I didn't actually know how to go from one to the other, but I knew I had to quit the one to get to the other. So that's where I just I just I did it. I just made the decision and, and went for it. Um, I was, I did a bit of a uh, personal training certification way back in Ireland, like, you know, 10 years ago or more. And I was always the guy in the gym, like the, I was an athlete growing up, so I played in all these football teams. And I was always the guy going to the gym or encouraging other people to go to the gym and helping people out in the gym just with my football teams and stuff like that. So I had the background. I was very lucky to play under a lot of very great coaches and learned a lot over the years when I was younger. Um, so I just kind of took that. But translating that to working in New York City, there's a bit of a difference. Um, so, yeah, I just I picked, packed up the tools and just went for it. Like, that was, that was kind of it. So when you, you said, like, packed up the tools, that transition was a little bit different. How is that different from, like, training a couple of homies in a gym? <laughs> some, some of the people... I feel like, you know, you're the homies are never going to listen to you. Yeah. How does that transition... How was that different for you from going to, like, New York? So, yeah, th there's definitely a difference in training a bunch of Irish guys in the gym. <laughs> Not even training. You're just you're just there. You're just working out. Uh, but, yeah, the, I suppose just to give a bit of context on the transition, I was, I was actually going to PT over in Edgewater, New Jersey. So if anybody knows New Jersey, New York, I used to live in Sunnyside, Queens, when I first Still moved over Queens, here. Queens, baby. That's right. What? Woodside over here. Woodside, baby. We got Woodside, we got Sunnyside right baby. here. <laughs> uh, so I used to live in Sunnyside, Queens, right? I quit the electrical. And the, the uh, physical therapist that I was going to see in Edgewater, New Jersey, he was looking for a trainer at the time to help in his clinic. So I was like, well, I want to be a trainer in New York <laughs> City. You need a trainer. So, like, let's make this happen. So we literally rang him. And we left the building site. I quit the job and rang him. I was like, I'm, I'm starting tomorrow. So... Now he was like, yeah, come on over. And I <laughs> then I figured out very quickly that I wasn't going to be making enough money to even survive just on that. <laughs> so then I made another phone call. Um, Bonnie Duffy, shout out to Bonnie Duffy. He owned a flooring company in New York City. So I, long story short, I used to leave Sunnyside in the morning, go into the city and do flooring, work on flooring um, from like 8 seven or eight to two o'clock in the afternoon, get the bu bus from Port Authority out to New Jersey and train people from like three to nine in the evening. Edgewater, New Jersey is, by the way, is like up close to the George Washington Bridge. And like that's not close to Sunnyside, Queens. So I used to have to get the, never forget it, the 936 bus oh. down the whole way, cross through the tunnel into Port Authority, walk through that tunnel to get the seven, then get the seven all the way out to Sunnyside. So it was like a two hour journey every night. But um, that's just to give a wee bit of context on it. But yeah, I worked with the trainer there for the, all of 2018, did the flooring in the morning, train in the evening, and just picked up as many skills as I could. And you yourself, like watching YouTube, looking at, uh, watching Instagram, just trying to figure it out, learn, 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 learn. Because I'd, you know, I'd, I'd put, I'd committed, like I was like, my goal is to be a personal trainer in New York City, be in fitness in New York City. Didn't know exactly how I was going to get there, but I knew that I was heading in the right direction, so... So every single day, you did that? Every single day, get up, go into the city. <laughs> and I want to give it a sh another shout-out to my friend Declan McAleer. He was, like, my ma mentor in the, f in the flooring. But I learned a lot of him from him, like, both as, like, just working, hustling, being a man, you know, business, uh, and just grinding it out, too. Like, um, he's from Fermanagh, County Ireland, in Ireland. Um but I used to get up every day and he used to joke. So I learned pretty quick that, you know, you have Mexicans and stuff that are, and Guatemalans who do the flooring. <laughs> I'm not talking to you, Dougal. Sit down and relax yourself. <laughs> My dog Dougal is here, by the way, folks. Um, so they'd be doing the flooring and I'd be the one that would be connecting the owner, the builder, the, you know, the, the super on the job. I'd be the man that would be kind of connecting everybody. And uh, learned a lot from him doing that <laughs> hey, but I used to do that in the morning and we'd get deliveries at like 9 o'clock in the morning and he used to call it CrossFit so we'd get like a full on, full on lorry load of glue flooring floorboards all that rubber for the flooring and we'd have to carry that up like 4, 5, 6 flights of stairs <laughs> at 9 o'clock in the morning so we, he used to call it CrossFit so we'd be like alright CrossFit on you know 67th and Lex so we'd have to go up do all that there so we'd have like a full blown 2 hour workout done before 10 o'clock in the morning 
and then you have to put the floor in, and then you have to go train people. So, like, physically, it was very demanding for that whole 2018, you know, but, again, that's, I had no choice no matter that's the decisions that I had made and the goals that I was going for and how to do it. So, you know, that was that was it. You, you learn a lot about yourself in those in those times, and, and I'm all the better for it. I wouldn't, I don't regret any of it. So what you learn? That you just gotta fucking do it, man. <laughs> you just fucking gotta do it. Like that's you. You've you made the decision. You made the decision to quit the electrical to get it, go after his fitness, and this was a stepping stone in that direction. So, you know, 2018 was a very tough year, both mentally, physically, all of that there. But uh, learned so much, so much, um, and just even then about the mindset. I'm, I'm, I know we'll get into it and stuff, but just to give context for people, like that was. That was a serious year for me in 2018, just kind of doing those two jobs and a lot of traveling and back and forth. Dougal, come Shh. on. You're going to get your turn, dog. Hey, sit. <laughs> sit. That's a good boy, dude. He's good, yeah. He's just, he's such an attention seeker. Like, he's like, oh, there's people here. Like, I can say hello to them. No, you can't. So then relax yourself. <laughs> dog dad, dog dad. Dog dad. Yeah, yeah literally. Dad. Yeah. Um, I see this the happy dad. Yeah. Happy Dad, the sales or whatever, but I wrote dog and I just YOLO. <laughs> oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, I just because I wrote dog on it. So, so yeah. like you did that for a whole year. There's mm -hmm. got to be moments in that year where you're like, maybe I should go back to electrical. Like maybe this fitness thing isn't smart. You know, like maybe there's family members like, dude, you're not getting paid anything. Like, did you have any situations <sighs> like that? Yeah, there was definitely like, you know, from the Irish aspect of things, like when you people found out, oh, he quit the electrical job. Like that's a great job. Very, you know, in Ireland, that's a very well, well respected job. Like you get, you get work anywhere across the world nearly as well with it. So whenever you tell people, oh, well, you quit the electrical to become a personal trainer, they're like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Why? You know? And I was like, you just, I was like, don't worry about it. I got it. Don't worry. You know? Um, and everybody's like, well, sure. When the shit hits the fan, the personal trainer is always the first thing to go. I'm like, yeah, well, so what if it is? Don't worry about it. I'll figure it out. You know? And and as you know great name for the podcast like aha like that aha moment there was so i'll never forget i was doing the two jobs for all of 2018 it came till about september october time come to the end of the year 2018 and i'd realized like i haven't made as much headway as i thought like i thought i'd be in training fucking celebrities in new york city <laughs> and i'm like how long are you doing like four months i'm like you know <laughs> fucking get a grip of yourself from here like five six years later i'm like you know we're, we're, we're at it now but like the um there was a moment where i was getting up every day and i was doing the flooring i was doing the training and i wasn't making headway and my friends even the irish boys and a few people over here there were one or two of them had a bit of an entrepreneurial head and he's like yo you got to get your own gym in the city you got to do this you got to do that you know don't give up and he's like yeah i know i'm trying and it got to a point where i had to tell myself every day just get out of bed get up out of bed every day no matter what and go do it because it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. And I remember thinking it was like it was like looking, and you had your goal on this other side of this massive black hole, and you didn't understand how you're gonna get across it. You could see the goal. You could see New York City. You could see a personal training lifestyle and a work job and all over there. I just didn't know how to get to it. And I remember my cousin Alexia was over visiting New York, and she was actually over visiting a Tony Robbins event. So I met her after that. Right, so she was fucking. She was high. She was on high dough. <laughs> she was on high dough at that time, but she told me, "Don't give in." That was that was on a th on a Saturday. She said, "Don't give in. It's gonna happen. Just keep going." On Tuesday, New York Sports Club reached out to me and asked, "Would you be in the 2019 campaign for them?" Because I've been going to just going to the gym in Sunnyside beside me, the New York Sports Club, and just posting, tagging them, just like you people did in 2018. You know, <laughs> it wasn't like sponsor me. You know, it was just like I'm in the gym. This is me. You know, so they seen that and they asked me to come in on the Thursday. Like, can you come in on Thursday do a photo shoot? And I'm like, fuck yeah, sign me up. I'm tap me in, coach. I'm ready. Mind you, I'd never did a photo shoot in my life. Like, this is still like, like this is not the Daniel that you see now. Like, this is still, you know, ex-electrician, just hustling, no idea about New York City. <laughs> I was only over there, like, less, you know, about a year and a half. And uh, I says, yeah, absolutely. As in, I know what I'm doing. I got this. Go to the photo shoot. <laughs> Hi. Relax yourself. I go to the photo shoot, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I need a, a, a space in the city to train all my clients. 
I don't know any clients. <laughs> didn't teach any class. He's like the, the boy um, who was over the photo shoot and like over in your sports. He's like, yeah, we'll hook you up in the gym in the city. You know, no problem. Emails. Um, Heather, who was the boss of the New York Sports Club that I worked on on 16th and 6th. Shout out to you, Heather. Legend. Definitely is one of those angels that was put in my path to help me get to where I am today. So long story short, I do the photo shoot, get the interviews with Heather and get a job in Manhattan, in Chelsea, the December, the day before I fly home to Christmas for Christmas 2018. So literally I went home with telling everybody I got a job in Manhattan in the city as a personal trainer in New York City, come back January, start. So like going from this massive black hole in front of me, not knowing how to get to be a trainer in New York City and having the mindset of just get up every day, do it, do it, do it, just get up and do it, get up and do it. And I, and I call it blind faith. I'm like, even though you don't know how you're gonna get there, as long as you have the desire and the mindset that it's going to happen and you're manifesting it and you're telling yourself that and you're getting up every day and telling yourself that even if you don't know how it's going to happen, I guarantee you it's going to happen. And that's, I'm a big believer in that now and I can understand a lot more about now, but the universe and stuff, but back then I was doing it before I even realized what I was doing. So that to me was probably one of the first big aha moments for me was that like just not giving in getting after it, getting up every day and believing in myself even though I didn't know exactly how it was going to happen. So that one moment and that one or two fo conversations led to me to being here today, to be honest. Holy shit. Yeah, it's fucking wild. Yeah, that's fucking <laughs> Appreciate wild. Appreciate you, man. But how did that feel? Like, what was that like to get that one, one, the photo shoot. How the photo shoot go? Yo, the photo shoot was, shoot was shoot. fire. I'm not gonna lie, I was loving. I, I, like, I think I've, I've seen those photos on Instagram. You sh you share those. Yeah, every year. <laughs> so <laughs> funny, I'm, funny enough story. You look like, like a rainbow. You got like. So Yo, I'm wearing those like <laughs> not the three well like the 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 leggings that are like three quarter length or whatever. But uh, it's so funny because like I'm in the middle. Like I'm the middle guy in the photo. So there's like I'm actually still friends with. Uh, Andrew, Trevor, uh, 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 Delilah, um, uh, all the the Susie, all the ones that did the photo shoot with me, I'm still friends with them to this day. Like it is, it's kind of it's funny that we've still kind of stay connected. Um, and uh, did the photo shoot, bro? I fucking lethal. What are you talking about? Is that <laughs> shit? First photo shoot, best photo shoot. Um, but no, it was it was great. It was phenomenal. And the funny thing was. I, they used my photo on the front door of every New York sports club on the Eastern Seaboard. I got my friend Snapchat of me in Boston. They go to the gym like, what the fuck am I doing walking in the gym and seeing your face? Why are you here? Like, <laughs> it was so funny. I was plastered all over the New York sports club on the Eastern Seaboard. So that was pretty funny. Like going from, literally, as I said, like not doing it all to being like, that so that was that was pretty funny. That was, <laughs> that was the most Irish thing you said. My friends in Boston. My friends in Boston. <laughs> literally, it was like boys in Boston. Like, why are you on the front door, of my gym? Why, man? So December 2018, I remember that because that was the time I got hired. Shout outs to Ryan. Hired me at a uh, Reload Physical Therapy. Ryan Chow, man. Ryan Chow, the Ryan fucking man. Ryan Chow is the man. But that transition, as I was getting hired, Ryan's like, ah, you know, I'm like, I'm moving in. Um, I'm going to the West Village, not going to be in Upper West Side anymore. I'm like, who the hell are you moving in with? <laughs> and I just see you post, like, I think you guys ate, like, pizza or something. And I'm like, oh, boy. The Chinese-Irish connection going on right there. Yo, he's, I say he's he's 40% Irish now after living with me for two years. A couple of pints of Guinness every day, I'll do that Yo, to you. I, I, <laughs> absolutely. Pints. Holy cow. <laughs> but, dude, that that was a big life, even for me. Like that's like around the time that I graduated uh, physical therapy school, got my first job and I was yeah. starting to get my feet wet. Mm -hmm. And even though I am a physical therapist by trade, I hung around with so many of you, you know, fuckers. Yeah. You, know, you Jay, yeah. Hunter, Trevor, Marty, everyone that was just, you know, early mornings, late nights, yeah. fucking training, yeah. seeing sessions. Yeah. yeah. And we'd be like at the crack of dawn, like Ben fade in. Have, ben still has a client every 5 a.m. Yeah, yeah, that ben, that, ben, that Ben boy is wired differently. So how, what, when you started doing a damn thing, like mm. you're, now you're actually in a city. Yeah. The Dif stakes are a little bit higher. Oh, man, different gravy. I'm very proud to say that. So I went from working the two- Hold on. Also, shout out to Pauly. Pauly, yo, Pauly. Pauly. <laughs> shout out to Pauly, man. He is the he is an OG of OGs right We had there. a squad, man. It's so hard to throw names out it's there. It's so, so Rachel <laughs> as well. 
Rachel. Oh yeah, Rachel Mariotti. Mariotti, she is. She's a goat. She is a goat. Um, congratulations on the newborn. So, but it's funny those people, all those people you mentioned, they're still crushing it. <laughs> all of them. That whole crew, uh, Ben, Jay, Hunter Crane as well out in LA now, Ryan Kutz, all of them. That OG group that started end of 2018 into 2019, and I say separately, like no no harm to like the new trainers that are coming in, but like 2019, man, was the year. Like that was one of the best years of my life. It was one of the best years for personal trainers in the city, I in my opinion, because we had a hustle more than anybody ever did. I feel like now it's not that it's easier, it's just a wee bit different because a lot of it is online. Where pre COVID, that was pre COVID, like there was no, not that many online. It was all in person. So you had to do me and Jay. It's funny, me and Jay, Jason Wesley, shout out to you. We were the 6 a.m. crew and 6 p.m. crew in the same day, every day. So we'd either be turning the lights on or turning them off. And we used to say, when we'd be walking up uh, Fifth Avenue to 28th Street to ITS, we'd see the lights on. So if I was walking up, I seen the lights on, I knew Jay was there. And if he was him, if he walked up and he seen the lights on, he knew that I was there. Um, so that was like, we were opening the, sh opening the gym, closing the gym. And that was pretty much all of 2019. I got up at 4.30 every day to get a 5M bus, to get a, f uh, a, a subway to another subway to teach my uh, 6 a.m. classes or clients. And proud, one of the proudest achievements, my, in my opinion, is that I never was late to one 6 a.m. session. The closest I got to was eight minutes. Eight minutes, I, I, we, the, the subway nearly fucked me, but it didn't. So getting, you know yourself, getting the bus to Queensborough yeah. Plaza and, and that, and then waiting for the seven to take you to Bryant Park to get the, four, the F of the M down to 16th <laughs> Street. Man, there was a couple of moments where I was sprinting to the gym to get there to set up before my classes or clients. But yeah, that was that was another transition from the two jobs in 2018 to working 4.30 a.m., waking up 4.30 a.m. every day for 2018. Dude, that was uh, when you were mentioning like you, Jay, 6 a.m., 6 p.m. If you if the lights were on, you walking up, you knew Jay was there. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite parts of the morning was that we'd get into the gym and we would just record who was doing sessions. We would tag everyone's name and say, yeah, yeah some people didn't want to show up to work today. That's right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the uh, the toxic, like, you know, hustle culture. Yeah, yeah. But, dude, it was so funny because you, you, you know that person coming into the gym was just so jealous that yeah. they weren't part of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You see people people tagging this, and I'm like, oh, fucking major, I missed that. We should have been there. Like, God forbid you missed a workout, too. Like, when everybody worked out together and then you missed it. I got so mad when I missed those workouts. <laughs> but like you were, you know, you were working, like you were training at another gym and stuff like that. But like 2019 was was a, a f phenomenal year for me. It was I learned so much and just like that was definitely the year of of you know now that I was there, I was the mindset that I had was like I am establishing myself. Like I am going to make that. There's no way that I am going to fail. Like I'm not going to allow myself to fail. And I remember saying this to Noheli. Shout out to Noheli, who was the worked reception at the gym and I said to her I said it to her and I forgot about it I said it and she told she said this back to me later that year that when I first met her I said to her that I was going to say hello to every single person who walked in the gym going to smile I'm going to take every class that I can I'm going to teach every class that I can sub every class that I can and I went from no clients no classes in the start of 2019 and by the end of 2019 I had 16 clients and taught 12 classes a week. So like that's a lot of hours, but loved it every second of it. So that kind of set me up to like, again, the, the man that I am now, like that was just 6 a.m., 6 p.m. and everything in between. No, I, I, that's one of the things I always tell people now. It's like when people get into the industry and they're like, I want more clients. <laughs> you know, how do I get more clients? And I'm like, that's like the wrong perspective, mm -hmm. right? It's like, how do I help more people? Yeah. How do I show up for other people? Yeah. Right, like no one's gonna show up for you just because you're there, right? It's not like I build it and then they'll come. It's mm. like no one gives a fuck. No, and it's you gotta show people that you're supporting them. You gotta show people that you're delivering value. And people are like, ah, you know, I don't create content. I'm like, you don't need to create content. If someone's training another client, are you gonna smile at you know your buddy's training a client? Yeah. Can you smile? Can you remember their name? Yeah. Right. This is like home court advantage. Yeah. Yeah. Like everyone should know each other's clients. Like you know the nine a.m.s. Every nine a.m. Yeah. knows each other. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. And that's what you want. You want to build that those good relationships, and you you're trying to help people. And a good coach, like again, we're all in the mindset. I know we're all in the same mindset of the rising tide raises all boats. Like, and I feel like that whole twenty nineteen crew 
that was their mentality. Like we weren't trying to, to kick anybody down to get ahead of anybody. We were all there to help each other. So, so what do you think with that 2019? Obviously, it's like a breakout year for you, right? 2018, you're kind of eating shit, spending more time commuting than you mm -hmm. are working sometimes. Yeah. 2019, you, you break out. What are some things that you did that you're like, man, if I'd never did those things or if I'd like, never put myself in that mindset, I never would have been able to have that kind of year? I think they had, like that mindset of not giving in, it's, it's like, what do you have to do to get to where you want to be? And it's like, right, I got to do this. Right, I'm going to fucking do it then. Go do it. Don't say you're going to do it and not do it. Like, that's where um, I had to get up at 4.30 because I had to get the 5 a.m. bus, right? So do it. Um, I had to teach the 6 a.m. class. Like, the first class that I ever taught in New York City was a Friday morning at 6 a.m. <laughs> that was the one, and I'll never forget it. Heather, Heather brought me into the office. She was like, she sat me down, and she said, like, she can't take a breath, and she's like, so I have 6 a.m. on Friday morning. Do you want it? And I didn't hesitate for a second. I was like, give it to me. And I said, I, like Tom Brady, when he said it to Kraft, like, I'm going to be the best thing that ever happened to this, uh, this football team. It was the same. I was like, I'm going to make this class waitlisted. I'm going to make this the best class of the week. And again, another, like a proud moment for me was the very first class, that Friday, AM, 6 a, Friday morning, 6 a.m., there was four people the first time I taught it. <laughs> four people and this is where people are like oh what if I do like nowadays people are like oh well I don't want to do this in case nobody shows up who gives a fuck if one person shows up or nobody great the only way is up nobody shows up great one person show up next week you know what two people show up the, night, the week, week after that I went from four people and I actually had to like personally ask those four people please come to this class <laughs> and they did thank god and I went from that to that class being called the Beasts class because it I programmed it harder than anybody else because it was the mindset. Like you had to get up early. You had to come and you worked I worked you harder that for that hour than you did all week. So that's why we named it the Beast class. And it went from four people to being sold out two weeks in advance to twenty to twenty four people, depending on the program. Holy shit. So, but that's like, I'm not saying this to boast or blow, blow up, smoke up my ass. That's like the mentality that I had from the get-go and I wasn't going to stop until that happened. And I said that that's, I told Heather, I was like, it's going to be the best last of the week. And I, I had to prove it to her. So I, that's just the mindset that I had. And, and uh, you know, I was, I was proud and that's, that's what people look forward to then every <laughs> week. It was like, all right, see you Friday. And it was great. It was like, that's where, as you know, like the 9 a.m. people knew everybody. The six AM crew, like they were, they were, they were there to show up and they encouraged people. And I feel like that was kind of like that Irish Yank mentality that I was building from the ground up before I even knew that it was the Irish Yank mentality type of thing. No man, the uh, what you're saying, you know, like now people see you, you're what streaming to so many people throughout the world. You're teaching these summits. You got twenty plus, thirty plus, forty plus in these summits, and they don't know like the humble beginnings. Like I remember logging on to like a Zoom class. Yeah. And like two people showed up, and the only reason they showed up is because they were relatives of people. On the <laughs> team. You know, it wasn't even. It was. It was like, oh no, I just heard I was gonna get a free workout. Yeah, I'm so and so's cousin. I'm yeah. like, all right, they're not even paying for these things. There's been times I've logged on to a Zoom and there's nobody there. Mm -hmm. But I think the best part is like that mindset you're talking about. If there's two people, four people, ten people, twenty people, if you're not doing the damn thing, mm -hmm. right? Like it shouldn't be about the people that are watching. It's just can you perform? regardless of yeah. who the audience is, right? Yeah. It's going back to like integrity and charisma, like how do you carry yourself when no one else is looking? Exactly. And I think you're fucking like, just a spitting image of that, so. Yeah, I appreciate that, I appreciate it. that. And, and that guy, the mindset of, and, and I was taught, I think it was my mum said it to me. Shout out to my mum, best woman ever. Um, All right, I was, I got, there's three people that you share in your story that I love. Who's that? Me. Yeah. Dougal. Yeah. And your mom. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, shout out to my mom. I just posted that reel this morning about that. <laughs> Lifting in the gym. We did a mic'd up session last week when she was here visiting and I loved it. It was phenomenal. Me, here's me just introducing her to everybody in the gym. Hey, have you met my mom? This is my mom. <laughs> Go over and say hello. Um, but yeah, so she, I remember she told she told me, she's like, because obviously this came up about like starting out and like what happens if nobody no what happens if nobody shows up? And she's like, if one person shows up, then that person gets your full attention. And you give them the best session you can. Even like, it's going to be a personal training session. If it's a class and they show up and they pay whatever it is, even if it's free, if they pay fucking twenty bucks for the class, whatever it is, they're getting a full-on personal training session with you. 
And what's that going to do? They're going to go back and tell their friend, oh my God, I had the best session ever. They're going to bring them the next week. Then they get that. And then they bring another person, another two people. So if you even start with one to four to five people and you're like, oh, well, I wanted like to sell this out and I wanted 20, 30 people, fucking get a grip of yourself, will you? <laughs> like, do your best to matter, to no matter if there's one person or 100 people in that room or in front of you. And that's that's the mindset that, that I have is you have to start somewhere. Just fucking start. Like, that is the hardest part. Like, I would rather fail 10 times over, 100 times over than not try it at all. So that's that's not, uh, as we say, it builds character. <laughs> those 2018, 2019 years, those were character building years, as we'd say. Yeah, no. And then 2020 was a lot of. Oh my fucking God, we get. Oh, a lot God. of happy hours. No, that's Whoa. right, yo. Before <laughs> you. Go. Oh my God, those Zooms, man. Oh, yo. Then so, every time you'd leave the Zoom call and come back in, you were wearing a different outfit or a different shirt or a different <laughs> hat. Oh, that was hilarious. To, to give the background story on that, we just had nothing to do. Yeah. We would train twice a day, you know, morning, night, whoever friend was throwing like a virtual class because pandemic happened. And yeah. we'd just be on these virtual happy hours, like 20 deep. Some people, yeah. I'm like, I don't even know who that guy is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't even, that person doesn't even know why he's here. I know, right? And we're just... <laughs> just joining in everybody and anybody's Zoom calls. <laughs> that was hilarious. 2020 was a... F Honestly, like, for me, like, 2020 was the year that I feel like I started hitting my stride. I feel like I learned so, so much. And, like, yeah. we were freaking traveling everywhere. Yeah. Random place, you know... Virginia. Virginia learning... Yo, that weekend bells. was lethal. That jumping on concrete asphalt yeah. underneath a bridge yeah so 2020 i remember this because it was some of the most fun i had it was just well not the most fun i had the classes were fun yeah. but us bringing kettlebells up and down your apartment to the park was Man. absolutely brutal but what was that what was... happened because you i think you lost your job yeah yeah 2020 obviously covid happened and i'll never forget it it was it was a Monday, the 16th of March, because it was the day before Paddy's Day, and I was in lifting, shout out to Joanna. We were in deadlifting every Monday, we deadlift, and I got the, you know, 405, or, or sorry, 4, 450 pound deadlift. That was my highest. Now, we were trying to get to as, as high as we could, and obviously... It's not that, bad for a skinny Irish guy. It's not guy. bad for a skinny Irish guy. So <laughs> we were, we were, um, we were deadlifting. Never, uh, the reason I'm saying is we never forget, because that was, we were in doing that on a Monday, and we got the phone call, like, you know, fucking world's shutting down, and pretty much... They'd call the, they go, stop. I apologize if anybody hears my dog whine. He just wants to say hello to everybody in the room. <laughs> so uh, we got the phone call from the company being like, doors are closing, pack up your stuff and leave the keys at the door when you leave the leave keys behind you. So pretty much that was, that was it. Like that was my job gone. So what do you do? You're a personal trainer in New York City, the world's shutting down. Figured the fuck out, you know that was the that was the mentality. So it was funny because like within a day, Monday to Tuesday, every person trainer in New York City went from an in-person trainer to an online person trainer, or at the park personal in, trainer, at the park <laughs> in person trainer. So that was you know that was a big moment. And obviously, as you mentioned, Ryan Chow, shout out to that man. You know, twenty twenty. You know, each each year is a wee bit of a different aspect. But twenty twenty, we got obviously locked in, our, in apartments, and we were there for the full year and. You know, obviously, thank God, my clients, we trained them online and, and, you know, we survived and stuff. But not only survived, I personally, I think COVID and 2020, same for you, it was one, probably one of the best years for me. Business-wise, yeah, but, like, just personal-wise, like, knowledge-wise, figuring it out-wise. And that's what, you know, led to, you know, kind of another stepping point into where we are now. But um, I taught these classes virtually. Tuesday, Thursdays, I had a bunch of, like, 10 women who I taught uh, kettlebells every Tuesday, Thursday, and uh, we did it for, for months. And then they said, why don't you take this outside? You know, why don't we do it outside? Because the weather was getting better. And I had, like, eight, 12 kettlebells in my apartment with Ryan, and I said, fuck it, why not? Saturday, one Saturday morning in June, I think it was, tucked the bells out. I said, I invited everybody. I said, whoever wants to come, free kettlebell class in the park. And I think, like, 20 people came. It was great. And I says, they were like, oh, will you do this again? I was like, Sh sure, like, let's do it again next week. Long story short, that just took off. Took off. I ended up doing every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and two classes on a Saturday, back to back. 
on 30 plus people every class um, and just did that for the rest of 2020. And it was a time where it was, people were like, well, you know, how did you manage that? You live. I live on a fourth floor walk up, by the way, whoever, if anybody lives in New York and knows that, you have four flights of stairs you have to walk up with. And I end up at, at my max, I think I had 32 kettlebells ranging from 10 kg to 60. <laughs> so we had to carry them all the way down on all the way back up. And people are like, oh my God, like, how did you do that? How? Like, I'm like, we fucking carried them. Figure it out. Like, that's what had to be done to teach the class. So we did it. That was another thing. Like, I had to work two jobs. I did it. I had to get up at 4.30. I did it. And we had to carry f 32 bells up and down four flights of stairs. We did it. I, I did it, obviously, at the start. <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to say you. we because the community, and this is where the mindset with the community is and wanting to help people in the Irish Yank society and that Irish Yank mentality. The people, most of the girls would show up early to help carry them down. And then, as we'd say, the finish or the hardest part of the whole class was carrying them back up. So I'd be like, all right, everybody grab a bell, grab two bells, grab three if you can, and let's go. Carry them back up here. So we'd carry them up the block and up the four flights of stairs. And that was a real community building aspect. Like people people knew, and, and everybody was like, oh, fuck, this, this sucks. But we we did it. You know, that was, that was part of 2020, you know, and that was... Um, that was a massive building. And I, and again, I did it for like, it, obviously you need money to survive, but that was never the driving goal. Like it was always, I couldn't wait Tuesday, Thursday, Saturdays. I'm like looking outside, please don't rain. <laughs> like we, I think I only had a cancel maybe once, maybe twice for rain, but otherwise every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday for six months, we taught uh, classes in the park. Yeah, it was just phenomenal, phenomenal. So with that, you took, I'm, oh man. Because you took that, and I feel like, you know, was that all that stuff, like, kind of just taking a job with a group class, all these things kind of, like, come into play? Like, are you planning these things, or, like, are these things that just kind of slowly fell onto your lap? That's where I, I believe massively in the universe, and, like, it, it, what has happened, it happens for you, not to you. So, like, you put these thoughts out there, and you have a desire, and you have a goal, even if you don't know exactly how you're going to get there. As long as it's in your mind and you're telling yourself that you, you can do this and you can get there, it'll happen. Like, um, and I truly believe that I I didn't exactly know. <laughs> it's fucking tough. Are you hey, tired? Are you tired, Dougal? A big yawn. Thought so. I He's truly. Like, when does it get to my part? When is it, when do I? Come I know, this right? <laughs> Hi. Can you stop whining? Hi, please. Thank you. Stop. So I truly believe the universe and it happened, the world happens for you, not to you. And I was putting those thoughts out there like, you know, I think I could do this. Like, I do think I could teach these classes. And I, I, and it wasn't like, oh, well, will nobody come? Like, so what if it, they don't? They're going to. Like, and I'm going to make it the best class of the week. I'm going to make it their outlet. Like, they want to come. And they want to come back. And that was just a goal. I was like, going to make every, try and make it as happy and, and train everybody to the best of my ability. And, and yeah, sure enough, they just kind of it just kind of snowballed. But like, you know, I didn't know I was going to get the job in New York Sports Club, but I put it out there into the universe, and it came back to me, and it happened. And I didn't know how many clients I was going to get in 2019, but I just put it out there in the universe, and it could, it came back to me, and ended up getting as, and as you said, you don't wish for client, you don't want oh I need this many clients. Like, you get a client, you train them to the best of your ability, and more clients will come. You put out you put out quality experiences they'll come you know you help people and want to help people and it'll, they'll come so like just putting out good value and being a good person honestly really like if you have that good person mentality good people will come to you you're a fucking asshole though i know yeah I try my best not remember to when you though. threw tortilla chips on my rug sorry about that <laughs> sorry about that Sorry Oliver's now got high sodium. Uh, <laughs> Oliver yeah. is the man. Yo, yeah. Oliver, remember the slow motion videos we used to get of him? Like when he jumped to grab the chip. <laughs> I used to throw, and Andy would throw a party. I'd come and I'd feed his dog tortilla chips. Um, yeah. But like, he's a fiend for them tortilla chips. He is, like, you couldn't even like be in the vicinity with something in your hand. Yeah. You jump him yeah, like he's got start. that spring. He, he, was, his, he was down. Did he come? To, he didn't come to Virginia, did he? No. No. Maybe not, but he might as well have been. Darius was teaching him. No, he was always at your I would always bring him That's to the right, class. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, that dog can jump. That dog, <laughs> that dog can, can jump. That dog can jump. The, um, but yeah, like those, those again, that's kind of the mindset. It, 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 um, 
<sighs> Doodle. I know. We're, we're getting there. Hi. We're getting there. Hi. Hi. We're Hi. Why are you doing this? <laughs> Why are you doing this? You're supposed to be a good... I'm supposed to have you trained on your embarrassing body. Now no, stop. Let me... <laughs> Dougal, that's a good puppy. <laughs> Apologize. It's like, because uh, it's funny, whenever I'm away and then I come back, I have to like retrain them. I'm like, remember those manners that we used to have? Let's get those manners back, you puppy. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, um, 20, 2020 was, was wild. And even in the snow, because we were doing it right up to December, November, December, it was like snow. And then it would it had thawed a wee bit, and we'd do it in like a circle or whatever, like you know. <laughs> um, but but uh, one of the highlights I'd like to point out as well is like that that weekend that Darius came, and we had like forty people. Twice, like we had two, back to back sessions. So it was like eighty people came through that weekend, and and just the whole community. It was felt like everybody in New York just kind of came to that park that weekend, and. Thank God it was one of the best, be most beautiful days of the oh, year. It was phenomenal. Um, but also, I want to give a shout out when I have the chance to give it to Ryan Chow. Like that man, I think that COVID, obviously when we were in our apartments and stuff, like I feel so lucky that I got to live with him and he was my roommate um, because we didn't know each other. Uh, this was another aha moment, I feel like, because before we moved in together, I had the mindset of, I am moving into the city. This is the end of 2019. I am moving into the city. I don't care who I'm living with. I am moving into the city. And I found an apartment like late October and the guy I was moving in with, he bailed, right? About two weeks before we were supposed wow. to move in. And I put out my Instagram being like, does anybody know of anybody? Or does anybody want to move into the city with me November 1st? Like, who the fuck does that? November 1st now. November 1st. Like who do, but who puts out in their Instagram like inviting people just to move in with them? <laughs> right? Me. That's who does. And Ryan Chow replied saying me. And like I knew Ryan through mutual friends. I think I might have met him twice before I'd re at in it was used to be performance. Yeah. So we weren't like friends, friends, but we'd met each other and we had mutual friends. So then <laughs> I would I was like, oh, you know somebody who? And he's like, no, me. I'll move in with you. And I was like, great. Let's do it. So then we end up moving in together November 1st, uh, 2019. And then COVID happened 2020. And like, it was probably one of the best things that ever happened to me. So he'd be teaching, training people, training clients on the sofa. And I'd be just sitting there beside him, watching everything, learning as much as I could, <laughs> just taking them. And I'd ask him questions after each session. Like, why did you do that? And why did you do that with that client? And what did that do? Et cetera, et cetera. And I mean, I think that my personal training just and knowledge in general just fucking skyrocketed. Like, I was fit to take pain away from clients. Like, not just personal training or physical therapy, but kind of mixing the two of them where a person came to me and they're like, oh, well, I have this problem or this problem. I was fit to take that pain away. Like, I couldn't believe it. Like, and I, it was working. So I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> this is amazing. And Ryan's like, I know. Like, this is what I do. <laughs> so shout out to Ryan. Like, that year, like, I learned so much. I mean, I would, without a doubt, not be in the position I am today without that man. No, big shout out to Ryan. He's my... He was the f he's the person that took a chance on me when he first hired me uh, out of school. And I was like, fuck, man, I don't really know what the fuck I'm doing. I took my first session on, one on one session. I got the person to flare up. Yeah. Like that knee was feeling better. And then I pushed it too much. And like every single week, I was just like, oh, I got to get better, man. Yeah. Like this guy trusts me with his business, being mm -hmm. an extension of him. And I'm like, I'm fucking failing this dude. Yeah. So every time. Any, any opportunity, Ryan goes, You want to shadow me? Mm -hmm. I would have like a five hour gap. Yeah. And I'm like, Yeah. He's like, you don't have to you don't have to shadow like back to back. Like, no, like I got to know everything, yeah. everything that you're doing, the way you communicate, the way you're looking at a split squat mm -hmm. or a press, how you teach skills. It's like that dude changed my life. Oh, big shout out to you, Ryan. Big shout out, Ryan. And even the aha moments, even just shadowing in him, and then like if you had a question or a thought in your mind, and then he would do it, and he'd do it. The person would be like that's why, or that's what I should have did. And then you, I'm like, I can't wait to go back and train this person and, and use what he taught me. And then, and then it's like, oh. <laughs> so we've had a couple, of, a couple of those aha moments too. No, so but before we even go, like kind of going, continuing with this like training thing, it's like, I feel like so much of what you talk about, what you embody, it's like Irish. Like yeah. what, how much does that influence like you, like how you hold yourself? Because I feel like you're disciplining Dougal and I'm like, 
seem like an Irish dad. To speak yeah, no, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, I definitely like I say this like I'd be the worst James Bond ever because if you seen me coming, you'd know it's me. If you heard me before you seen me, you'd still know it's me. So like I'm like I can't hide. Like I have a big ginger <laughs> beard, a big red head, and a big Irish accent. So like I am the epitome of Ireland, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I I keep kind of the Irish in everything that I do. And personal goal of mine is is always to fly the Irish flag as high as I can. Like I I want to be, you know, empowering people as uh, literally empowering as many people as possible, but doing it with the Irish flag and uh, and keen keeping the Irish mentality and the country in the back of my mind and just making the Irish people proud too. You know. Um, because there's not that many of us over here in the fitness industry. Like, there's literally maybe you can count on one hand the amount of Irish personal trainers in New York City, and the three of us, four, well, Sinead as well, <laughs> the four of us were in the four of us were in the one gym. So, like, you know, there's there's that. But yes, I ever again, my mum taught me. Where I'm, me and my mum are, are are very very close, and everything. I feel like she was kind of she was kind of getting me ready for this without knowing she was because she's a PE teacher and she has mm. been for, you know, 30 plus years. And and I used to go to work with her when I was younger. So like she was, you know, I'm used to teaching groups and being in, in, in front of groups and talking in front of people from my young age. So those few things, um, but just kind of the common sense aspect of things too. Um, and, you know, having that Irish mentality and the way we'd even just talk about stuff and as we'd say, having the crack, like, if a person comes to you or a client comes to you for personal training, it's personal. So they're coming back to you because it's personal. So they want to enjoy themselves. So making it fun is an also a goal, never mind training them and getting them to their fitness goal, but just the Irish, you know, having the banter, like, you know? So that's, <laughs> there's always that in the backbone of everything I do is, is having the crack. And by the way, that's nothing to do with drugs. That's just the way we say having fun, having the banter, <laughs> just so all, anybody who doesn't know what that means. Um, and that's always like kind of the backbone of it. Um, you know, growing up playing all those football teams at home, like all of those wee things, I feel like kind of come together in in my training philosophy, my coaching mentality, and all of that. Um, so yeah, there's always a wee bit of Irish isms, as we'd say as well, in the back. Yeah, I know you guys got like now you know you guys you have the Irish Yank Society, you got like the app coming out, and you got like t-shirts, like, you know, pick up your heavies. Or pick up your heavies, pick up your heavies. heavies, pick up your heavies, yeah, so <laughs> that's just one of my sayings, was like, go grab your heavies, you know, that was the 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 empowerment aspect of it. Um, and even next, so I delighted that like, I've launched the Irish Yank Foundation this year. That's like my, to give back to the charity, my charity back home. Um, and then I have my the Irish Shank Fitness app that was launched just last month or two months ago. And I'm trying to use, like, these are platforms, and the Irish Shank Society is the, kind of combines it all. That's, like, my community, community. It all combines to empower people. Like, that's the, the goal. That's why, you know, we help people is to show them they're stronger than they realize, go grab their heavies, pick up a heavier weight than they think that they're, they, they have the mindset, oh, I can't lift that. Like, I love it when somebody says I can't do something or I can't lift that, because I get to show them that they can. And that's such an empowering moment. And not, you know, 98% of my demographic is female. And I've learned, like, obviously there's so much more that like, goes into them with the emotions and even time in the month and all of this when you're training. You know, you have to be a lot more knowledgeable in a lot of this stuff. But showing them that they're strong and they realize is such a empowering moment especially for me it, like i love when i get that like ah i'm like oh my god i can't believe i lifted that <laughs> and in the previous just this last summit there in san diego we had the 106 pound kettlebell and they were repping it like there was a, no joke there was a woman who was told not to lift more than 10 pounds oh, God. she repped the 106 for three reps deadlift like unbelievable like i don't even know what more to say like that's that's like the Irish Yank Society. That's the Irish Yank mentality of you are strong and you realize. And I'm trying to use all these platforms and any of the classes that I teach on my app, like it is every, the message is every, every class is you are strong and you realize, go grab a weight that you're thinking, I don't know if I can lift that. Try it. You surprise yourself. So that's, you know, using these platforms and stuff, that's like, that's one of the backbones is just, yeah, getting them, getting that empowerment motion and showing people that they're strong and they realize 
No, I love that, man. There's too many fucking healthcare providers that are scaring people, telling them not to do things. Yeah. You can't lift so m- over 10 pounds, yet you have a kid, that kid gets heavier. Within the first couple of months, he's Literally. already over 10 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a point on that as well. I call it mom strength. Yeah. Mom strength. Like, there's no strength like it than a mom strength. Like the mom said, it's funny when they say, "Oh, I can't lift more than ten pounds," and then they have a thirty-pound child. They just lateral raise lift it up <laughs> by the scope of the neck. I'm like, lift it and carry it over and set it down again. I'm like, so you like, how much does your child weigh? Oh, like these thirty-six pounds. I'm like, you literally did a lateral raise with thirty-six pounds, you know. And then they, when they have two and they lift the two of them and they're carrying, I'm like, you're just doing a farmer's carries with like, you know, sixty to a hundred pounds, you know. So I'm like, you're so much strong and you realize, and that's kind of the. I like to say mom strength and, and just even highlighting that point, you know, with them. And, and it's so enjoyable for me as well. Oh, man. <laughs> no, I was thinking, I'm like, man, if someone had twins, that's like double front rack squats all day. Literally all, all day. day. You ain't no, need no weights to squat them, shit, to squat them kids. <laughs> so kind of wrapping things up, man, you, we, you gone from like electrician, working your ass off, two different jobs, to the point now where you're like helping a ton of, I don't want to say females, but the Irish Shanks, which is predominantly 98% females, like you said. Yeah. A couple of guys, I'm pretty sure, get dragged along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You seem to have, like, a clear-ass message or an idea of what you want to do, right? Like, get people stronger, show them things, show them that they're more capable yeah. than they actually think they are. Yeah. Like, was there an exact moment where you're like, this is what I want to do? Was there a client that you work with where, like, thank you for showing me this? Like, when did that click for you that, like, this is what you're fit to do right now? I think it was an accumulation of a couple of points, but definitely those ke- when you work with kettlebells, like just because of the, the shape of them and you have to lift it by the handle off the ground and there's you know, you can just line them up from 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 light to heavy and you know, when they look at it, like it's you know, and again, this is no discrimination again, men, female, whatever. This is literally just the way it is. It's my demographic is mo- majority female and and you know, all the mostly women came to the summit. Shout out to Troy, the one guy who came to the last summit there. <laughs> he was with six five, two hundred and thirty forty pounds, giant, but gentle giant, and he was repping the one oh three for reps as well. So um but it was the moment I think maybe around the the t- the twenty nineteen, twenty twenty you know, encouraging the, the women to, you know, try this, see how it goes, and then they do it, and they're like, oh, my God, I can't believe that. And that just re, you know, sh- it puts it in my brain, like, I, Daniel, you can teach this. You can encourage these people and these women to do this. And, f- and then I kind of honed in on it during 2020 in those classes, and it got to a point where, <laughs> no joke, I had the 60 kg um, it, in the classes, and I had to tell the women to stop, like, move down a weight. We know <laughs> you can lift this, but let's go lighter and do more reps. So that was kind of like a funny moment where you went from trying to encourage them to lift heavy to, like, bringing them, no, no, let's, let's go back down a bit <laughs> and do more reps. We know you can do it. So, yeah, those, those like, tw- probably it really, really hit home during those classes in 2020. Um, and, yeah, that was, it was phenomenal. And just the, the message of, you, you women, you can, you, you're so much stronger than you realize. And now it's just, how can I get that ma- message out to the masses? And that's where, through my app, the f- you know, the, even the foundation, the society, and everything that I do from now on is, you're stronger than you realize. Getting that message out there. Let's fucking go, man. All right, to wrap it up, this is the first podcast. I don't know what we're going to wrap it up with, but, I, like, for us... For me, I don't know. I always say us. I always say we because, like, you never do this shit alone. No. Someone listens to this podcast. Maybe it's this episode. Maybe it's future episodes. I don't, oh, I always want people to, like, leave that podcast with, like, one big idea. Mm. One thing that's going to, like, start their morning. That's going to get them to push. That's going to make them take that next step. Giving people, like, an aha moment. Like, if there's someone out there right now that needs to hear a message, and that message is coming from the fucking Irish. <laughs> <laughs> what is that message? You, you just you got to get out of bed and you got to go do it. You got to start it. Even if you don't know how you're going to get there, just having that having that desire and will and want to do it and succeed, you will succeed. If you have that mentality of I'm going to do it, I'm going to get up every day, I'm going to I'm going to make steps towards getting there even if I'm unsure of how I'm going to get there you will get there. So just not giving in, not giving up. As I'd say, no quitting early. No quitting, say, early. No quitting early. We say that in the workouts, don't be quitting early. So yeah, you, you got this. If you believe in yourself, it's going to happen. Facts. You fucking heard that. Don't be quitting early. No quitting early. 
Awesome, Daniel. Appreciate you for fucking coming on. Thank you. If someone wants to rock with you, what's the best way to find you? What do you do? Uh, the Irish Shank on Instagram. The Irish Shank. Um, there's only one, as I say. Um, you're, and then the Irish Shank Society is like the the group page where we put our where there's workouts or what's coming up next. And then the Irish Shank Foundation is the foundation that I launched this year to give back to help the charities um, back home in Ireland. And then I have my own fitness app. If you want to work out with me, the Irish Yank, uh, dot app or my link in the Instagram bio, I got weekly classes dropping. Weekly classes where dumbbell classes, both gym workouts, kettlebell programs, all that and above. And Dougal is in every class, by the way. If you don't <laughs> want to come for me, Dougal, this boy right here is in every class. And also my mum made an appearance last week as well. Oh, she's got a teacher class. Yeah, so we, we taught a couple of classes together with mum. And no joke, I think we did we did five classes and by far like they're the top five. Like they're the f everybody's favorite five so far. So that's you can find me. And also shout out to you. Congrats on this new podcast. I am absolutely honored to be the first guest here as well with Dougal. So um, thank you so much and best luck with it. And I've no doubt you're going to succeed. So. Thanks, Dan. You kind of forced me to pick you as a first guest, though. Nah, I did not. What are you talking about? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, no, I appreciate you guys. I think um, just to kind of recap everything that you said and things that I resonate with heavily, it's like if you're struggling, just fucking one more day. Yeah. One more day just getting out of bed, just taking one step after the other, just keep telling yourself yeah. one more day, one more day. One more day, one more, one more day. day. One keep more. smiling at people. Remember people's names. Yeah. Be a nice fucking person. Yeah. Grab your heavies. Grab your heavies. Grab Don't your fucking heavies grab every your day. Fucking heavies. No matter if you're having a bad day. And also this goes as well for if you're a trainer in New York City. If you're having a bad day, you can't be taking that out on your client. Your client comes to you for a good time, for a good time. So no matter if it's your client or anybody you meet in the street, just be a nice person. You know, smile, say hello, and you're just right. <coughs> Don't be a fucking cunt. <laughs> That's what you say, right? That's what Irish people say. <laughs> That's what the Irish ones, folks say. So, yo, shout out to you, man. All right. We got to go. Bye, 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 bye. What's bye, the Irish bye? bye. bye. Yeah, just bye 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 b